That was awful. Hey, this is not the show. This is just a uh, hangout. This is my second attempt. If you happen to see an ephemeral, very short version of this, ignore it, because uh, I forgot to enable the stupid question and answer app, which you have to do on the Hangout page before you go live, or they won't let you do it. So I stopped, I bailed. Sorry about that. For those of you watching live in the chat room, uh, I'm sure you had a good laugh at my expense. Uh, if you don't know, I'm Tom Merritt, host of the Daily Tech News Show, among many other shows, and uh, I want to do a little uh, Q&A. So if you're, if you're watching the Hangout, uh, go pop some questions in there. What we're going to do, I'm going to take some questions out of the app in the Hangout, if you guys have any anyway, uh, answer some of those. It's, it gets a little confusing to be talking to people and trying to answer those, so I want to answer those first, or at least some of them first. We might get to some later in the show. Then I'm going to bring in people into the Hangout. Um, so that's that's part of what's going on. Uh, I'm sure there's a uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people trying to catch up with the multiple Hangouts there, so I'm not even sure. We only have eight viewers right now. Um, but but we are live, uh, so I will be answering questions. Daily Tech News Show, just a, a th sort of a, a state of the show, uh, is still in its transitional phase. As, as you've noticed, we started to get more pieces in place. It's, it's my theory, and it's always been my theory, even in the Buzz Out Loud days, to just do one thing at a time very well, uh, not try to do all the things at once. I know that I can do a daily tech news show. I've been doing it for over 2,000 episodes, so I've got that part down. Uh, I've got great guests, uh, and, I, and I can get great guests on, so I've been trying to get that part down. Now that uh, Jenny Josephson has joined me as a producer, I, I can do a little more. Uh, of course, the Merit Militia has been amazingly helpful along the way, but I haven't been very good at taking advantage of that help, and I apologize for that. But part of the thing is I have to get to a point where I know I need the help before I can ask for it. It will come. There will be a point where I will be annoying in asking you for things. Uh, and the first of those things was asking you to host those News For You shows that we're doing Thursday and Friday. And the response to that has been fantastic. You guys are great, so thank you for that. Uh, but piece by piece, this is all coming together. There are still those things that I can't talk about that are that we're waiting on. We're talking to people, making decisions. Uh, but again, that's because I want to do this right. I want to I want to get it going right. Uh, but you know, we got some music rolling in. You know, eventually we might get some video rolling in. We got a. I think Eternal Sword has a has kind of a gorilla RSS feed for video, which is fantastic. Um, so so look for that in the chat room. And and if it's ready. By all means, let me know, and I'll I'll put it up on the site so that people can find it as well. Um, I got 62 viewers now. Amazing. All right, got some questions too. So uh, let's start with this one from James. How many folks are typically involved in putting out a tech news podcast like this? Well, depends. Uh, at Buzz Out Loud, you were within CNET, so some of it's uncountable, like having a building and, you know, all of that sort of thing. Uh, but we had myself and Molly Wood, Veronica Belmont, later Jason Howe joined the team, and then Veronica left. Uh, but it was about four people to actually make the show. Of course, then there's the people who maintain the content management system. There's the people who, you know, maintain the video posting system, all, you know, all of that sort of thing. Uh, at Twit, it was myself, uh, Sarah Lane, Ayaz Akhtar, and Jason Howe. Uh, but there was also, you know, Jammer B, the studio manager, and uh, Lisa Kensel and her team selling ads. And so there's, you know, there's other pieces going in. For this one right now, it's me and now Jenny, uh, who's in the chat room, by the way, if you want to say hi or ask her questions, Jenny, Jenny J23 in there. Um, and so this is, this is what we can do with two people and a lot of volunteer help from you all. Uh, and as we... As we get going, we can do more. I think that as time goes on, and this is what I've been trying to say kind of in a lot of different places, is the Internet lets you do a lot now. Uh, and maybe it's good to see what you can do with two people. How good can you make something with two people, given the tools you have? Sometimes when, when you go outside of that and you just say, well, we, we, really, we need to shoot for the moon, uh, you may overdo it. So I don't want to do that. Okay, to James' question. Uh, that's. I hope that that answers what you're what you were going after here. Let's go to another one. Are the numbers you're seeing sufficient to support an ad supported model? Do you have plans for ad sales, or are you thinking about alternative revenue streams? Thinking about all of those things, um, the numbers are fine. The numbers are great. 
I'm not disappointed in the number of people watching this or, or listening to this uh, at all. And they would support an ad-supported model. I think there are always inherent problems with journalism and ads. Uh, and there always have been. Those are not unsolvable. Uh, there's lots of ways to accommodate them. Uh, the host thread model that Leo uses is a great way to accommodate them. I am only going to do an ad if I believe in the company and would recommend them anyway, right? That's a great way to do it. Uh, the way CNET did them with Buzz Out Loud, where ad sales is totally separated, and they they put the ads in and you don't know anything about it. That's, that's a good way to do it, separation of church and state. But no matter what you do, if the ads are funding you, it has an effect. So I don't know if it's possible. I don't. I really don't. But maybe we can find a different way to do that. And I think with Cord Killers, we're kind of experimenting with Patreon and that sort of thing. Maybe a licensing model out there. Uh, there may be a direct subscription model out there. I, I don't know. But that's, that's definitely one of those questions, Toby, that I haven't answered yet. But I'm, I'm desperately trying to answer. Uh, Eden asked, is the new permanent co-host found yet? Nope. Done. <laughs> Next question. Will Sawyer, oh, Joe, Joe wants to know if Sawyer will ever get a roving reporter segment. Sawyer, sorry, he's, you know, a roving reporter, he's good at the roving, he's not so good at the reporting. He also sleeps a lot, so I, I'm not sure that that's really good. Sawyer's my dog, in case you're wondering. Uh, Kostia said, there are rumors about DTNS joining the Frog Pants Network. Would you like to comment on that? Uh, pretty much everything I do, I consider to be part of the Frog Pants Network because Scott and I are close and we support each other's stuff and we promote each other's stuff. And the way Scott does things is, hey, Frog Pants is here for the people who make good stuff to help each other out. So, so yes, I am part of the Frog Pants Network, but that also doesn't mean that I am necessarily exclusively part of the Frog Pants Network. Sword and Laser is part of the Frog Pants Network, also part of the Boing Boing Network. It's kind of a Frog Pants Studios production because I want to support Scott and those guys, and this is one way I can do it. It might get more involved, it you know, as time goes on. But there's my comments on that. Uh, Viet Tom Lu, in hindsight, in your opinion, what aspects of Buzz Out Loud and or Tech News Today were not a good idea and didn't work out well? <sighs> Buzz Out Loud. Um, Relying on internal hosts all the time was one thing uh, that I got away from because because it, it definitely caused issues sometimes with with well, you want some of that fresh blood you want some of that fresh perspective uh, with tech news today you know I don't want to comment too much on what what worked or didn't work tech news today in general because I don't want it to look like I'm slamming on the current product they're doing a good job iterating there and making that into a good show continuing the tradition of that being a good show. I would say, though, that one thing that I did at Tech News Today was try to stretch things too far. Uh, and and I'm, I've corrected that in the Daily Tech News show, which is make sure, be better about including the things that you really think the audience are interested in and not saying, well, we're going to have 10 stories. And so we got to fill that 10 stories up like a bucket every day. Um, so I hope that answers some of that. Brad Johnson says, do you need to be part of a larger network to sell ads effectively or is something you can do on your own with sufficient downloads? Um, yes and yes. You, if you're part of a larger network, you will, sell, you will sell more ads because you'll get more numbers, right? But it becomes a numbers game that you're chasing for the advertisers. That's one of those subtle effects that the advertisers have on you. I would say that you can, you can do enough numbers to sell on your own Selling on your own on your own is the hardest. The easiest way to do it is to get a third party to sell for you and become part of an ad network, but not part of a distribution network. And then the next level is to join an actual network like a Twitter or a 5x5 five five or something like that. Um, Ian says, are you happier now that you're controlling your own destiny? Well, I don't feel as much in control as, uh, as maybe I, I should uh, but I think everybody's happier when they control their own destiny. I don't know why anyone wouldn't feel that. Uh, Srinivas says, what do you think about using the no agenda model for being able to support for the show? No ads, but users contribute. The value for value model uh, that Adam does. I think it's, that, it's a great model. It works really well for Adam. So whether it could work for me or not is, is a question, but that's definitely on my list of, of things to, to explore. You know, um, 
Dan Carlin does sort of a modified model. He does a little bit of the value for value. You buck a show is all we ask, is what Dan says on his shows. He also still takes advertising, but he takes it minimally, uh, and he puts it at the end of the show so it's less invasive. There's lots of different models out there uh, to play with. Another, oh, Toby is in the, well, how much fun is it going to be editing the Thursday, Friday guest show? Sounds like a lot of work. Do you guys see a future in direct user audio contributions like this? We'll ask Jenny after this Friday, Thursday and Friday about that. Um, the, uh, the, the, the thing is, because I'm shooting Sword and Laser, I am not putting together those shows. Jenny is putting together those shows with, a, with an editor named Katie who's going to help out. Uh, I, I don't think it'll be horrible. Do you? I, I hope not. Um, there's enough lag that she's not going to be able to answer that directly. But no, I, it will be a little more work, obviously, than just doing live to like ooh, drag it in. Um, I would like to come up with a really efficient and easy way to take those kinds of user contributions, for sure. All right, let me see if I can look at... It's because things are getting voted in here. Andy's uh, got voted up a little. Patreon for DTNS, possibly. Again, it's one of those things on the list, uh, for sure. Like I said, working for cord killers, so maybe. Uh, you know, Darren asked how... And we're going to have Darren join the Hangout here in a few minutes. But how are Hangouts working for you? They're working great. Much better than I expected. I, I decided to use Hangouts because it was simple. Uh, because it was me not having to switch and stuff like that. But it is it has outperformed my expectations. There's some problems with it. There's some issues with it, uh, for sure. Sound quality could be a little better, although switching that setting at the beginning helps, but I have to remember to switch that setting. Um, th there's some limits on, on what you can do graphically and, and, and with, uh, and with um, like lower thirds, you know, the, the things along the bottom that tell people what you're doing. But overall, it's been really good. I think as a host, having good bandwidth seems to help how this works. All right. Wow, there's lots of... Is this live? Yes. Uh, no. Well, it depends on when you're watching it, Jaime. Um, I think for you it's live, but for a lot of people it, it, might, it might not be. Okay. Well, good questions in here. Um, I'm going to... Wow, and they keep coming in. Think we could ever get a tour of your setup, asks Jeff. Yes. Uh, mostly the setup's the same, but uh, there's a few differences here and there. So that's definitely something I'd like to do, a little behind the, the scenes uh, thing. Matt asked, will you keep the show to 30 minutes ish runtime? I think it works well at that length. I, I think that's what I want to do, is keep it at the length that works well. If I bring in a, a permanent co-host or a rotating co-host, that might make it... Usually adding a person adds 10 minutes, is what I found, so that might make it 40 minutes, but that might work well. Uh, and a couple people... One guy especially was like, you know, it used to be that I would listen to Tech News today uh, and it would last perfectly for my commute and then have an extra 10 minutes for me to have later. And I liked that extra 10 minutes. Now it just works perfectly for my commute. So a lot of it's what you're used to, uh, of course. Will you incorporate a randomizer straw poll-like segment in DTNS? Asked Brogan. Possibly. I would like to. Uh, again, that's another added complication, another thing to be done to be kept track of. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think I've got some ideas. Like maybe even in the News for You segment, there's one story that, that gets voted on at the last second in a straw poll. I don't know. Um, oh, Bruce asked something I was just thinking about this morning. He says, any thoughts on breaking news covering events like Apple or other product launches? I wouldn't rule it out, uh, but right now... So many people do it. I'm not sure it's necessary for me to join in uh, and do it as well. Um, but I may change my mind just because I want to. Uh, it's kind of fun to go along with it. So that's that's something I haven't decided on. Uh, I'll, I'll keep thinking about it. Gunny says, any chance your lovely wife Eileen will be seen on the show? I don't want to say never, but never. She's She's busy. Uh, and she's she's not a camera lover. Oh, and Mike asks, did your audio setup change from what you used to have? No, uh, it is the same audio setup. The only the only difference that has changed from what I used to have is I added a second mixer, and and this shouldn't affect anything you do except that it allows me to hear when I play 
audio. I, I always was able to play audio from my laptop into the mixer, but I couldn't hear it back without plugging in headphones. So I added a second mixer that splits off the signal to my headphones so that I can actually still hear uh, what's being played back to me. So I can actually hear myself talking back to me for the first time. It's in studio talk. It's not what's going out to you exactly. Uh, but but that's the only change. Otherwise, it's the same. All right. Uh, so let me start bringing in the folks. I'm just going to take a moment here to add some names. Darren Kitchen, uh, that was a way the Hangout worked really well, was bringing him in on the show today. So thank you for sticking around and joining the show. Jackie, I'll bring you in for a little bit. To, um, hey, Gordon McLeod, bring you in. Andrew Zarian, you're around? All right. Bring you in too. Cool. Um, tensor guy. Is it, is it still a 10 limit, even on the live ones? Greg Skinner. Oh, Joe, let's try this again, Joe. It should work this time. Uh, Sebastian, there you are. And Tom D. Yep, you come right up. I assume that's you. It's a pirate. All right. That's the mumblings of the people who will be joining me shortly. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the chat, chat room. Scotty Rowland says, any chance of keeping the name of the show? Uh, Scotty, by the way, is the guy who started our, our subreddit, so thank you for that. Uh, yeah, there's a chance. I mean, when I started, when I came up with this name, it was purely as a, almost a joke to have the most generic name possible. Uh, but it it is starting to, to grow on me, so I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'll keep it. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. Hey, Darren. How's it going? It's going well, man. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? It totally worked out. I have a switch right up here. Watch this. I flip it, and it does all of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, you're in the Hack 5 studio right now, right? Yeah, this is actually just my office. The main stage is right over there. Shannon's actually uh, in studio today doing some Hack 5 goodies. Andrew wants to put his lower third up, I suspect. He just No, it was mirrored. I had to fix it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I gotcha. I'm looking at myself. I don't know which way to look. Yeah, yeah. That is another weird thing about Hangout is everything is, is mirrored back to you. So when like you put up a lower third, I know people may not realize this, your lower third is going to be backwards, which makes you freak out for a second. But if you make yours backwards, then it's going to be backwards to everybody else. TVZ Gun says the call went to his phone. That's weird. Well, that's what happens if you've got Hangouts on your phone. Yeah. It did the same to me. I just answered on the computer. Yeah, you can still answer it on the computer. That's true. Hey, Jaime. Can't hear you. But hi, Jackie. Hey. Can hear you. Awesome. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, guys. Hey, Sebastian. How's it going? Good, good, good. Thank you all for joining me. This is fun. These are just some of the wonderful members of Chat Realm. We still having problems with you, uh, Theater Monkey. Hmm. I'm not seeing any video. That's weird. Oh, hey, Gordon did sneak it in. I didn't even see you. Is everything working okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Excellent. You're kind of my uh, guinea pigs here. Never tested this setup before. It's working well. Now it feels like a hangout where we just kind of have these, you know, random noises in the background and pauses. Uh -huh. and uh, uh, where are we getting the uh, background noise? I don't know. Somebody's typing. It's all all right. Oh, hey, look. Joe works now. You can I even see him it. and everything. Wow. Technology. Who to thunk? <laughs> I see that uh, Jenny may be getting some some questions in the chat room. I, all I notice is that she is uh, declaring her love of puppets, which is good. 
I love me some puppets. <laughs> we know Jackie loves puppets for sure. Her devotion is well documented. Puppets are good. So how do you all think the show's going so far? Tom, I think you're knocking it out of the park. I mean, you... Everything you do, everything you, you put your hand on seems to turn okay, into stop. gold. So <laughs> So there's there's nothing left for me to do. I should just... There's nothing left for you to Wait. do. I mean, just retire yeah, on you're top. You're it. Man. Just retire. Yeah. Well, okay, but that's... Don't, I'm not unappreciative. Thank you for saying that. Because uh, I and and in all honesty, I think it's going well myself. But what what else would you like to see? I guess is maybe a better way of putting that. Hmm. I think you. One thing that I really enjoy is, um, and you already touched on it, but one thing I really do enjoy is the second, the second person, the second host. Um, whether it's how you're currently doing it, you know, just rotating through hosts or you know a person or a permanent host I think a second host would be great for you so okay two things two th where my head's at it and there is uh, should it be a permanent host or could it be a rotating thing of regular hosts uh, or should we just keep going with it as it is and is one-on-one -on -one better or should it be like today for, for a short period and yesterday too we actually had two people on but they were temporary hmm. I like both I have to say you know as, as both a viewer and um, a contributor sometimes I must say like the other day um, oh gosh who was it you had uh, talking about net neutrality that was fantastic oh John John Brodkin yeah I like the whole like you know pop in for one story kind of drop off perspective stuff um, but then I also like that when there's the one-on-one, -on -one, you, you get a little bit, you can go a little deeper than in previous shows. So if that if that's the case, then you could still do a model where it's a either a regular or permanent co-host, and then occasional pop-ins like you did today, or, or like having John in uh, on the show yesterday. I'm thinking like, uh, what were those old six-shooters called, like the revolvers? Yeah, a revolving a revolving set of co-hosts. So you can just you know like that. So it's not even like every Tuesday like, is Natalie Del Conte no. like we used to do on Buzz Out Loud. It's 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 a it's a regular cast of characters. Yeah, it, it's like well, a, you know, there is something that's nice about having um, being able to know like oh, you know, Mubix is on Mondays or whatever. Uh, so that's cool, but I don't know if it's all that necessary. Yeah, it could be like the gun in, in um, uh, uh, Roger Rabbit that has like the guns with different faces and stuff, or different things. <laughs> mm. It just shoots co hosts out of it. Yes. yes. <laughs> a co host gun. We miss you on Friday. Like, co way. like a co host cannon, kind of like yes. a, a carnival or a circus cannon. Right. Right, and 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 Tom could wear like a bandolier full, full of <laughs> co host ammo. I like it. Well, Tom, what are you more comfortable doing? Do you like having a regular, sh you know, every certain day, if you're going to have a regular on Mondays, so you know what you're going to talk about on Monday, or do you like it a little different every week? Well, it's it's almost like it's a it's a dynamic range. Uh, when you have regular co-hosts, especially like what we had on Tech News today, where it's going to be Sarah and I as every day with me, uh, it's a safety net, right? You always know you're going to meet a minimum amount of quality. Because you know what you're going to get from those three people or four people, uh, with, you know, because don't leave out Jason. Um, so, so it gives you that. But you also don't get you. You also limit the surprises, and I don't mean you put a top on quality. Uh, but you also you, there are you know individual perspectives from guests. So we tried to do the best of both worlds by having some you know having the guests rotate through, but still having that base. The problem you run in there is then not everybody really has a chance to say everything that they want to say. With the one-on-one, -on -one, what's nice about that is is you get the full perspective from both people on that show because there's enough breathing room, right? Uh, so I don't even know that I prefer one over the other myself. It's just they're different different approaches, and I'm not sure which one is the is the optimum way to go. I I think it depends upon the guests that you have. Oh look, TVZ guns here. Hey man. Hey. 
Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can see you. Okay, cool. And hear um, both. I was going to say, it depends on the guests and, and the topic. Like like Darren said, uh, the yesterday's show with net neutrality really added a lot when, when you know, it, something was explained by an expert who just had written an article that was really well-researched. And I know I learned about net neutrality and common carrier and some of that kind of stuff versus, you know, if it's maybe more of a slow news day and you just have a, a single co-host, then at that point you are, you know, there's that one-on-one -on -one interaction that, you know, that can be shared with with the rest of the uh, the community, you know, vicariously. Yeah, and that and the the single regular co-host with guests uh, gives you the most flexibility, right? Because you have a little bit of that safety net if you have the right co-host, obviously. But then you can also bring in those experts when you need them. Uh, and and if an ex and if your guest falls out, it's not a big deal. Right now, you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of living without a net, right? Because if suddenly Scott Johnson's uh, technical issues weren't resolvable today, I got you know I'm gonna have to scramble to find another guest, and I can do that. But it's it's a lot more difficult than if it's like oh, okay well we already have our co-host so we can we can just fly and do it on our own. Um, it's getting that right co-host too. That's the other thing. And that scrambling is it's a last minute stress that you really don't yeah, want yeah. right before you're going on the air. Yeah, you know you you felt that before. It sounds like oh many yeah, times. Tom, I'm a, I'd like to know, Tom, like as far as uh, stress and all of that is concerned, like what is the uh, how. Big of an impact has Solo been on your pre-production and post-production? Uh, you know what? That this is a secret of Daily Tech News Show that I'm going to reveal here, uh, in response to your question. I am pretty much doing the same prep that I did before, which is why the show is shorter. <laughs> there's <laughs> there's fewer uh, news news bites in the headline. There's fewer discussion stories. Uh, I just kind of left out the parts that were were done by others. And you know I'm keeping an eye on the calendar, but I always kind of kept an eye on it anyway. I just didn't write it. Uh, and I'm picking all the messages which I didn't do before. Uh, so so that's a little bit extra. But I'm also mostly just doing one discussion story, uh, and I'm trying to get the guests. So I've I've essentially tried to keep that prep time at about the same. Time. Is now now that you have uh, your your new Uber producer, uh, is some of that going to be able to offload to her for like guest wrangling or, or things along those lines? Uh, you know, the benefit of having a producer to help out. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, and you know, we're talking about what what those things should be and and figuring out like what's what's best to hand over and what where she can actually help. I mean, already uh, she's pointed out some technical things that because I'm not listening to myself. I haven't noticed, so that that sort of stuff is invaluable. Uh, certainly, you know, you got two more two more hands around. It definitely helps. Do you ever watch the show back and critique yourself? Yes, not every day. <laughs> I used to do it every day with Buzz Out Loud. That was a nightmare. Now no I try way. to do it just to kind of. I just kind of try to do spot quality checks. What are some of the limitations that you've noticed with Hangouts that that you know? kind of difficult for you to do this with Hangouts rather than doing like a full production thing. You know, um, that's because I wasn't actually doing the switching or the f or the or the technical aspects before. Hangouts has been surprisingly good. Uh, as I mentioned in, in that question earlier, you know, the audio quality some people don't like, although it's it's good enough especially when I remember to set the setting uh, to to voice, it's good enough for 90% of the people out there. Uh, it, bandwidth wise occasionally we've had a couple things that I don't know if you noticed the YouTube video from I think it was yesterday with Allison was like smaller at the beginning there's weird encoding things that happen sometimes uh, the positives are that the the embedded video goes up immediately like faster than any human could do it the right. switching can be a problem it can be laggy and I know I, I apparently I went out of sync a little bit uh, during some of the shows, so so there's stuff like that. I am seeing a little bit of lag with your video right now, actually, and your audio. Well, and and that is interesting because Allison said she saw some lag with my video and and sync issues, but they didn't show up in the final published version. So I think it also depends on the person on the Hangout. I think it does a lot of adapting for bandwidth reasons, uh, and and you may not see the same thing that the people on the stream see. It, it's it's also interesting great when it's just two or three people. 
that's another reason for just two people. Go, what were you going to say, Gordon? Uh, I was going to say it's a little interesting that um, it seems to vary even from moment to moment. Like you were just talking, and I noticed that you know you were saying stuff, and it was a little out of sync. But then a few seconds later, it seemed to catch up. Yeah, it does a lot of adapting. And Tom, I think you're spot on here because actually, Gord, I I see a lag in your your uh, um, video and audio as well as Tom's. So it's it, I think it has to do with whether you know when you record it. When you record it, the final product is a lot different than the actual live stream. And even yeah, if you did have the the you know uh, equipment and budget and all of that stuff to do the full on production, would you want to? Yes, uh, and the the the, the the yes part of it is, uh, and, and Jenny and I have talked about this a lot. Like, when is the point where the effort is worth the return? Is the is the only question there? You know, I no, everybody, myself included, wants to make something that is the best thing that you can make, right? Right. But at so, at some point, you have to remember that the content is the thing that's most important. And most of the people aren't going to notice a subtle change in the audio quality or a subtle change in lighting. Uh, so it's all about gauging like, all right, we'd have to spend this much, not just money, but effort and time and additional complexity to get this return. Is it worth it? And figuring out how to make that calculation in the first place, right? So, so for me, alone, without anybody helping me, Hangout was, a, was dead simple. Uh, now it becomes like, okay, so if I could have somebody in there switching the Hangout, like kind of right, keeping right. an eye on things, doing stuff like that, is that worth it? Is that worth their time? Or should their time be better spent doing something else? You know, the, the biggest thing that I think Jenny's contributed so far is the show notes. Uh, the, the show notes on the site have been done by her, and they're amazing. Um, best show notes I've ever had. So... If if it if, if it came down to like well I wouldn't be able to do that well okay then it's do we offload that to somebody else and then how do you account for that person's time is it a volunteer who's happy to do it uh, if it's a volunteer who's happy to do it what happens when they get tired of doing it right you have to take all this this stuff into account so um, I don't I don't think it's bad to get to that point but you just got to be careful that you're not undercutting other things by doing it. You don't want to do it just to do it, I guess. Be the you also have to put into consideration all the distractions of upgrading your setup. If wow. you're going to be doing your switching, do you want to be looking here and looking at this one to see the stream is up yeah. and to see if you're switching it properly and the lower third is set up properly? I mean, there's a lot of distractions that it takes a while to kind of, you know, adjust and get used to that. Yeah, when I was doing the real deal, I would do all the switching myself. Uh, and I never participated in that show as well as I could have if I hadn't been. Uh, and, you know, and I just knew that. And Rafe, Rafe filled in very nicely and carried it that way, and we were great. You know, it was not a problem, but it takes up a piece of your brain. Even just adding this little soundboard here, you know, you'll you'll see it. You'll see me stop thinking about the show and go, "Where is the closing music? There it is." You know, right, so it right. just it's uh, it, and any additional piece of complexity has a cost, and it's all about cost benefit analysis. Um, would you would you say that the distribution of the uh, video versus audio uh, viewership or listenership is comparable to some of your previous tech show ventures? So say that again. The 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 distribution of viewership as far as uh, either audio uh, downloads versus video views are they comparable to what you've been seeing in the past? I don't know. Probably not. I think they're smaller at the, at this point. You know, I'm I'm still ramping up. Um, no, no, I'm not talking about the viewership. I'm talking about like, uh, you know, the video viewers versus audio listeners. Well, I just, only have an audio. The ratio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, that's what I was saying. Is the ratio, the distribution. Yeah, the ratio is you know. very much towards audio because I only have an audio. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I can tell you. I mean, we we do video and audio, and it's about seventy thirty. Seventy percent is all audio still. That's always the way it's been. Even Buzz Out Loud days, that's the way it was, uh, and it was that way when I left Tech News Today as well. So, you know, I, I'm you know I'm actually looking here uh, to see. We were, well, I don't want to look at today's. I want to see the, some numbers. So yeah, I'm, it looks like the general. Well, it doesn't show me numbers for for those for some reason. Um. Well, maybe I go to my video manager and see it, but the, the you know the numbers are are visible to everybody on YouTube, and it looks like there are a couple thousand. 
Yeah. You're, you're talking, well, around 6,000 on YouTube, so that's pretty good. Uh, but that's also partially because I'm not providing an RSS feed for video. And that's one of those things where it was just my choice to say, like, audio is the most important thing. I want to get that right. Uh, I want to focus on that because two-thirds of the audience is always audio anyway. Uh, and, and I'm not against a video feed, but it's just an a a added piece of complexity that I have to maintain and make sure works and all of that stuff. And we're dealing with that on Cord Killers, but we also have more people working on that show. I mean, um, providing a video RSS, Tom, it, it becomes a little nutty. We were using Blip for the last five years, and we just got the notice in the in, uh, today saying that they're killing RSS. So now, you know, you right, have to they're not, they're gonna, Yeah, I heard about it that. Yourself. Tom, would you consider just using your YouTube RSS feed for the, as the video edition? No, nah, because you can't download. Well, you can with Miro and with other... You know, client side yeah, programs. But, but you're setting yourself up for a support nightmare there, right? Already, mm. I have to support people who are like, how can I get your show in Downcast? <laughs> and I'm like, by adding it. <laughs> you know, and I try, not, I try not to be like old time internet guy, like, you're just the way you're supposed to do it. You add the <laughs> RSS feed yourself. <laughs> But there, a lot of people just they just don't know how this stuff works, right? They're they they use a smartphone and that's it, and that's great. You want them in the audience, so you say, oh well, you know, you can, if it's not showing up in their index yet, go get the get the subscription, add it yourself. Now more and more of those apps are starting to add me to the index, so that's that's going away. But if I did a video feed with YouTube, believe me, the Beyond Pod people would be all over me. <laughs> this is a horrible video feed. I don't want a YouTube link in my Beyond Pod feed. That's that's not what I want. Uh, and so that's how they all talk. Um, no, that's <laughs> uh, so you have to take that into consideration. I mean, and then you got to worry about formats, right? I just got an email today saying, you know, you're offering an MP4, but I want an M4V. I can't listen to an MP4 or watch an MP4 on my on my phone. So now you got to have multiple feeds. You got to worry about transcoding. Right. You know, Toby Pinder in the chat room says, I think you should feed out the video, even unedited, direct rip from the Hangout. There's nothing wrong with it. I do. I do take the step of taking that unedited video and I upload it to archive.org and I put that link in the in the blog post. What I don't do is take the added step of creating an RSS feed of it because that's that's a little more time and a little more support that I don't want to engage in yet because the video feed isn't meant to be consumed that way, right? And then you start have to deal with people who have expectations because they see it in iTunes and they're like, why don't you have intros and stuff? So I leave it where it is. And, and I think it was Eternal Sword who created kind of a gorilla feed, and that's perfect. For people who want that RSS feed, community went, goes out, creates one. If it works, that's awesome. I will continue to upload it for that reason, and you can get it. Uh, but And at some point, when we get to it, I'll maintain it, and, and it'll be part of that. Um, Tom, is, is, it, is it possible, you know, more and more content creators are going independent. Is it possible that... The Oh, oh. Whoops. what was the question? No, me too. No. no. Where are they going? It is possible. <laughs> it is. I believe. I want to. Uh, I'm getting some uh, some some running commentary from Jenny, who's like who's basically saying, echoing the things I'm saying. Don't get fancy for the sake of being fancy. Focus on quality. That's what's important right now. Um, and she, as she points out, and she's absolutely right, lots of cool producing and show overview skills, uh, but she's kind of new to podcasting. So it's, a, it's you know, I get the benefit of her experience, uh, but she's also getting the benefit of this experience, um, which is great. Hey, Tom, are you uh, looking at possibly getting a, a video machine like Brian Brushwood has for running all of his stuff to do the, you know, not, 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 at the level of switching of like a TriCaster, but something, you know, obviously Brian has a lot of capabilities and, you know, invested the money. Is that something you, you might look at for, for your use? And then as a sub question to that, would at that point is when you would start looking at having a, a technical person there to, to do the switching so you don't have to. Yeah, exactly. I'm not at that point. I'm not looking. I actually have Wirecast. Uh, I don't feed it into Hangouts because I really don't have a need to at this point. But I'll prob that'll probably be the next step, is to feed Wirecast into Hangouts so that that works well. There's some sync issues with Wirecast. It gets finicky with how it works with these, these third-party programs because it was really meant to just record, right? 
Uh, so I've, or, or my black magic is actually more the problem in that case than Wirecast. But uh, so that would be the next step is to make it so that I could actually start a, a motion graphic that had the theme song right at the beginning of the of the video. Uh, and then you have to have somebody that goes in and edits that. You can even edit it in YouTube and then export it that way so that you know you start with the motion graphic instead of starting when the Hangout starts and clip off that part that says Google Hangouts at the beginning and stuff like that. Those are the steps to get to before I get to the idea of, oh, and now I'm going to bring in multiple Skypes and all of that because as Andrew knows, as soon as you start going that route with having to do the, the mix minus and, and running multiple instances and all of that stuff, it's all doable, but it gets a lot more complicated. It's totally doable, but and uh, you know even if you'd have independent machines for each Skype, now you got to worry about okay, how am I going to send the video back? I have to provide return video on each machine, so that's another two hundred dollars. Is and I got to install Wirecast on each machine to send the return video back, so it gets a little complicated. It's almost like somebody invented a software Skype thesaurus. <laughs> you mean Google Hangout, Darren? Oh yes. <laughs> Hey Tom. Hmm. Thanks hey, for hey, no problem. I figure I get. Oh, cut you off there. Sorry, man. Uh, I'll defer to that. Yeah. Which is an idea. All right. Uh, so yeah. Have so you yeah, tried I turning mean, it off and on again? There's a there's an issue with <laughs> using the tools. Hold on, I'm. Oh, I think he muted himself. Okay. Um, I, there's an issue with using the tools that you have to do what you can versus, oh, but if I use more complicated tools, I can do this much more. And that goes back to that same uh, same thing I was talking about before. Jaime, are you back? Oh, you're muted. I'm back. I'm sorry. I apologize. So we were, we're left on the edge of our seats with your question. <laughs> Well, my question was that uh, as more and more people become independent in, in content creation and, and producing stuff, do you think it's possible that something like the uh, like Jason's TD chair could become virtual and, and independent and provide switching uh, services and archiving and whatnot um, independently for you know more than one podcast? That actually goes right with what we were talking about before you when you rejoined, uh, which is you know Hangouts acting as a as a virtual Skyposaurus or virtual yeah. uh, TriCaster. I think, I wonder what Google's direction is going to be with this, and it's partly a conflict of interest, right? right. What happens in Hangout is it saves to YouTube, and that part works amazing. And Google has a vested interest in uh, So, Trying to see where that's coming from. Oh, I'm sorry, that's me. Let me, let me, let me move around. <laughs> it, it, that's that's part of the that's that's part of the conflict is they're going to make YouTube always work the best, and they and they don't really deal with podcasts. Uh, that that's not in that's not in their purview. So I don't see them making it really easy for podcasters at some point. I wish they would bridge that gap. Uh, cool. You know, I rely on FeedBurner because it it still just kind of works, but it's not like they develop it or maintain it. Uh, it's a dumb thing that eventually they're going to kill, and and everybody's going to have to get off of it and do something else. And whether that, that turns into a feedly situation, uh, you know, most people have abandoned it already, but there's a ton of people that still use it. So I wish Google would embrace podcasting, but they haven't. Uh, so well, where's right their now, incentive to to get it into iTunes? Where's where's Google's incentive to you know allow? YouTube uh, channels or feeds or playlists or whatever to become RSS downloads that are just then going to go into iTunes. Yeah, you know, well, go Google has to figure out how to sell ads ads into them, how to do AdSense with that. And then they, that's their right. incentive, right? Because then it doesn't matter where they go. And then they have a big patent dispute with Apple over it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 was, I was thinking not necessarily Google, but, but just... You know, somebody with with enough bandwidth that maybe doesn't feel like they can create necessarily their own content, but they they, they you know you're they're you know really good at at um, you know all the connection parts and the switching and whatnot, and maybe him doing remotely like like kind of like what Brian does when he he switches from from Austin. Right. Right. Uh, so maybe maybe you can have. Of course, I'm not saying necessarily Jason, but somebody like Jason. 
who did that kind of freelance for you know. Well, I know Adam different. has suggested just just pretty much that exact thing, and I, I think a couple other people have too. Oh, um, yeah. Where where they would be willing to try to do that, but you're right. right. There's not like a, a dead simple service, and then there's Hangout, which just is like we're oh, going awesome. to virtually be the switcher. We're going to be the robot that switches. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the chaos, like the Casio rule. You know, Hangouts works <coughs> most of the time well enough, so it's probably a lot easier than. Well, the problem with Hangout that I've noticed is it will switch to different people, you know, just on its own because there's sound there, which is something that can be a bit annoying when, say, you want you want somebody else to be the focus, like Tom. If you're talking and it all all of a sudden switches to your guest, for example, and it only switches to them because there's a, a knock on their on their desk or something like that. That's the the annoyances that I find from Hangout. Well, Just you can, and and this this kind of ties into what Jaime is suggesting. You can have a person switch in Hangouts. You can oh, even you hide can. them so okay. they can't be seen, uh, and they can just sit here and and say, you know, I'm going to show. A different person. I'm going to show a reaction shot. I'm going to I'm going to switch back to the person who's talking, um, and that's how Pixel Core does it. When they they do a bunch of Hangouts, they operate a bunch of Hangouts. You probably don't even know they do it, uh, but that they put a, a sort of a hidden person essentially in there who's keeping track of all that stuff. Okay. So Tom, on the co-host. Um, aspect. I know that right now it's probably still going to be remote, but are you looking at the future of having somebody in studio with you? Yeah, I mean, obviously that's ideal. You know, all jokes aside, it is ideal when people are in the same room together. Uh, I don't think that's the. I, I, I don't feel like that's you know a deal killer. But yeah, sure. If if it's if all else is equal and one person can do it live and the other can't, it's always preferable to do that because you do get better visual cues. I, th I think there's a lot you can do, and I think Hangout does a little bit of it. Skype even does a little bit of it, to be able to watch the person you're talking to. Uh, and if you position things correctly, you can almost look into their eyes uh, and stuff. But it's, it's never quite the same. And that, that's where video is superior to audio. When you're doing just audio, you don't get those visual cues. Speaking of people who are in the LA area who might be interesting to have co-host with you, this or something else, have you ever thought about doing something with with Andrew with Maine? I don't trust him. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's the easy answer. Uh, <laughs> listen, I'd love to do something with Andrew Maine. He's a busy, busy guy. Yeah, uh, he he's got a lot going on. Um, so, yes. Oh yeah. yeah. But that's you know that's. And that there's, I could go through the list of like, here's the people in LA, and you know, what's the possibility of doing? I, I, you know, I don't want to do that for two reasons. One is, I don't want to have to say like somebody's lower than someone else on the list. Uh, but also, I'm I'm actually doing that, right? I'm going right. through all that stuff all the time, trying to figure that out. Right. I'd be worried if you had Andrew Main on that he'd just make the whole show disappear. Can, can I yeah. can I add that we have Andrew Main on Cord Killers coming up? I, I don't think it's oh, next yeah. week, but in two weeks we have Andrew Main on as a guest on Cord Killers. Oh, just and we saying. Have, I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> and, and Jenny's we pointing gotta... out that the best co-hosts evolve naturally, too. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean... I'm, I'm opposed to robot co-hosts. <laughs> <laughs> No, no genetic engineering. But they also probably what you know, the <coughs> ideal way is that you start having somebody on as a guest and, and then you realize, hey, this person's really great and we click yeah. and they're available and they can do it and we can we can have them yeah. on, we can afford yeah. them. So. Mm -hmm. Justin well, he didn't evolve that way, but he kinda that's the way NSFW happened to a certain extent. It was a, 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 a the evolution of a of a relationship on on cam. The rest is history, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, freaking, um, I, 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 yes, there are lots of examples of that. <laughs> Tom, you brought, you were talking about monetization earlier. Um, with if you were to take an advertiser, would you want to work with a company like PodTrack, where they kind of do the legwork for you, or would you want to find the ads yourself? Oh God, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> I would not want to find the ads myself. I, I would like someone else to do all of that for me. Yes. So yeah, yeah, a company like Podtrack would be great if I if I did that. Uh, I think I think there's a lot of people trying to crack that right now and to be that thing because most podcasters like I want the ads, but I don't want to go make myself find the ads. It's a different skill set. So I like great. money. Yes, I like money. I just don't want to get the money myself. Yeah, I don't want to have to talk to the person <laughs> and make, you know make the sale. And those those are different skill sets, right? And it goes back to that like focusing on what you do well and keeping the complexity down. So services like PodTrack, uh, you know, or or Five by Five is doing it for a lot of people. There's Midroll is out there. Podcast One is out there doing it. Uh, there's a lot of folks starting to get into that area and and say, hey, we we can be the solution for you in different ways. I think the biggest battle that we have is as podcasters that put ads on our on our shows is that we're competing. I mean, it's the same ad pretty much on every show. It's rare to find a show that has a unique ad, and it makes it a little bit more difficult to sell it uh, on the show to your audience if if you have a crossover audience with another podcast. So it, it that's the downside of going with an ad agency that's you know providing an ad for you know a hundred thousand other podcasts. Yeah, I mean, the ideal situation is to be an advertiser for yourself, right? Yeah. To, to be able to say, like, hey, I have this other thing that you can get. Uh, you mean Squarespace is not a unique? Genius on that. I thought, I thought, never mind. Have you looked into doing stuff like the Amazon affiliate stuff as, you know, just as a secondary source of revenue? I do it. Oh, you're doing it? Okay. <laughs> That's how well it works. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I, I guess I should should push that. The Tom Merritt store, I have all the equipment that is in my studio is listed there as Amazon affiliate links. Um, so if you're, you're, I mean, it's mostly there because it's an easy way to show people like here's the list of equipment. But then if you did want to buy something and you clicked through there, I would get a small cut of that. I I've looked around through there. Tom. Tom. Do you have a do you have just a specific Amazon button like most of other web pages I've seen? Because I've I've not found one like that. Just to buy, if I'm going to go buy a TV, I could you know kick you some some money. If you go to tommerritt.com/store and you okay, this is this is me being guilty of thinking like an engineer. Um, yes, you can click on any of those Amazon links for my books or Tom Tom's Amazon store or that little box down there. They all take you to Amazon. And then if you go buy a TV, I'll get credit for it. But you don't know that. And so you're thinking like, I just want the Amazon button, right? And I'm thinking like, sure. I mean, you just do the workaround and click on the Amazon button. So that's a great idea. Tom, should, have you I taken the time and, and read the terms of service for the affiliate program? What's that? Have you read the terms of service for their affiliate program? Well, I, what am I missing? Hi, Shannon. Uh, pretty much everything. Uh, I, I actually, a lot of podcasters are getting kicked off the affiliate program because it's so vague. So technically, you're not allowed to say, hey, guys, go support me and use my Amazon affiliate link. Ah, so okay. it, 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 they're doing some crazy stuff with it. So a bunch of podcasters recently got kicked off, and I'm writing a blog about it. So I actually got in touch with someone at Amazon, and they were pretty much saying, like, yeah, you really can't go and talk about it on a podcast, but you can have a link on your site. If someone happens to click on it, you're fine. <laughs> but the link I'm cannot be a off. custom link. It has to be a link <laughs> using the Amazon guideline. Bye, Shannon. Aww. Well, listen, folks, I'm sorry that I have to go, but I have to uh, catch a flight and, uh, and head off to uh, San Francisco to record season two of Sword and Laser Video. But uh, thanks to everybody in the chat room for joining. Thanks to everybody on this Hangout for joining. This was really fun. We'll do this again. It was great to be here. Thank you. Yes, yeah, awesome. Thanks, Tom. Sounds great. Tom, you still doing that book signing? Uh, it's, a, it's not a book signing. Uh, January 20th, Sword and Laser Meetup at the Borderlands Bookstore. And let me get the actual link here. Uh, it starts at 5 o'clock. Five o'clock Pacific time. Well, if you're there, you're going to be in Pacific time. So yeah, cool. if, you're, if you're in San Francisco, come on by. And if looking you just forward to you to back in the back. Copy, yeah, if you just I'll happen to bring stuff. a copy of, of Lot Beta. It's it's okay. Yeah, I'll I'll sign anything, pretty much. Any trips to New York coming up? 
No, no trips to New York yet. You never know, though. I want to come out there. I love New York. All right, bye, everybody. Bye.